In this second deleted level, which is an extended sequence of the sewers in Seattle, this comes on the heels of where Ellie goes into a building and she um, survives an attack by stalkers and gets thrown out of the window and gets swept away by the current. And then we cut the section that um, used to be there in the final game. Now you will get to play it. So this was a way to get a bit more interesting puzzles, um, interesting traversal, uh, figure out how Ellie can navigate the sewers with the fighting current. Ultimately, with a lot of these levels and these sequences, the reason why we cut them were for pacing purposes. Uh, but here it is for you in this very kind of raw form that part of it will feel finished, parts of it will feel like assets are missing as far as audio, animation won't be final. But it's a glimpse into what a game looks like when it's months away from finishing. Enjoy. to acts as an immediate goal for the player, but being able to climb out is not going to be so easy. To keep levels interesting and engaging, we alternate between positive and negative values the player experiences. Here, it's a positive to have found the ladder, but then a negative to discover it's not the solution. But then another positive to identify the next short-term goal of the doorway. By alternating between these opposing values, we give players what they expect, but not how they expect it. This level, internally known as Fine Nora, was quite long in duration as we had to make Ellie traverse a far distance to the opposite side of downtown Seattle. The sewer section was originally longer than what we released the game with, approximately 10 minutes more. This was one of the few areas of the game that used water flow as part of a traversal puzzle. The player has to go upstream to use the current to get to the platform to reach the other side. We mostly cut this mechanic game wide, however it remained in essence in the section swimming to the aquarium as Ellie when you were avoiding the waves. When players reach the doorway and enter into the room, they're faced with a dead end. The real reason for this dead end room is that on the reversal when exiting back out of the doorway, players are faced with the route onwards. A pipe that they'd not been able to see when they were swept past it on the way in, and something that was hidden from view when on the side platforms. The intention here being that the only option is to go off the standard path in order to search for a way out. Throughout the rest of the level, we also used light to indicate to the player that they were heading in the right direction. 
At each turn, however, we block the direct route forward. Players would know that they just have to keep finding alternative paths, promoting those feelings of being desperate and trapped. We slowly introduce the player to consider climbing into smaller pipes and crouching in these tight spaces. This is to slowly build up to and encourage the player to climb into out. such small pipes that they'd have to be Just crawling on their stomach, out. which is something that the player previously may not have recognised as a playable space, let alone the desired route they need to take. We added a tiny space just to reward the player's exploration with a pickup item, and we made sure it was something that made sense that you'd find in this area, a canister and all the garbage that had been washed into the sewers from the surface. We loved the idea of making Ellie prone through a tiny, dirty pipe in order to get out, as it was a great opportunity to use our prone mechanic. The unique oh, camera setup was created to support crawling in these pipes, as the standard prone camera is much higher above the player. We also created custom collision in order for Ellie to manoeuvre in these tight spaces easily. Initially, the oblong collision capsule around the character caused issues crawling around corners. We put extra effort into the custom corner collision, so the movement experience is as smooth as the main game. In order for the player to feel cramped, claustrophobic and desperate, we'd been enforcing the traversal mechanics that allow for a tight environment which promote these feelings. We introduced the use of the squeeze through so that we can keep the player feeling enclosed and tight, but without repeating the same geometry. Here we change from low ceilings with wider walls to high ceilings and tight walls to change up the spatial pacing and keep the level from repeating itself. Originally, we had the waterline much higher here, so players had to swim through this tight tunnel. However, from watching user test feedback, it was occasionally causing people to discount the route entirely and turn back on themselves. So to avoid any risk of this happening in the final game, we present a lower water level so the tunnel is easy to see and commit to using. Although this isn't as impactful without the prone swim, it's the better decision as it means a smooth experience for the player with no backtracking frustration. As we surface from the water and over the crest of the slope, we reveal what is further in this tunnel, a clicker that has sprouted and the fungus has grown on the sides of the pipe. It was great to see people who user-tested this area becoming increasingly worried as we forced the player to squeeze past the fungus and inches away from the clicker's face, all the time not being sure whether the clicker might be alive or attack them. Although we aren't as cruel as to force a clicker attack in such close proximity, we do have a payoff for this moment. This clicker momentarily turned into Joel to show Ellie's PTSD from what happened to Joel at the start of the game. Ultimately, we decided to save this moment for the farm level, as it was more impactful there because it could become the centrepiece of that experience. Whereas in the sewers, we weren't able to make it as much of a narrative point and give it the breathing room and reaction time that it deserves, given the tight space. Ah, oh shit. <laughs> For the final section, we eventually opened you out into a wider area as you traverse through such tight spaces leading up to this. The changing environmental pacing makes it begin to feel like we're coming to the end of Ellie's ordeal. An earlier iteration used the current that we'd shown at the start for a slightly tougher traversal puzzle to conclude the sewers. The ladder was clearly visible from most of the area, but the player was faced with a fast-flowing torrent of water they couldn't cross. If the player attempted to jump into the water, they were not able to swim across the ladder due to the water's speed. But instead, they had to traverse the pipe running along the top of the space in order to get across the water. This is the first time we get to see stalkers that are embedded into the walls. So this optional room is a nice little early extra that the player gets if they explore. We also use the pickups to lure players over to be close enough to trigger the stalker's attack. 
and this caused quite a few jump scares with user testers who played our game before its release. Using this pipe was retained in the iteration we shipped with, as it's the last of the extreme methods Ellie has to undergo in order to escape the sewers, and what she will go through in her pursuit of revenge. The last ladder climb is quite lengthy, and although we could have trimmed it down to a shorter climb, we liked how this last segment of the journey built anticipation for whether there was success at the top or not after all you've been through. Ultimately, the ladder exits out into the subway station, which is how it connects in the final game. Ellie then has to find her way to the hospital from here, crossing paths with the scars for the first time. <laughs> 